Getting a proper antenna is a critical step towards free TV. There are good antennas and there are not so good antennas. We have reviewed many antennas and done videos on some of the better ones that are available. However, we thought it might be a good idea to point out some of the antennas you should avoid. This goes for both indoor and outdoor antennas. Seems like the crappy ones get advertised on TV more often than the good antennas. We cut through much of the clutter surrounding TV antennas so you can make an informed decision. Any antenna that claims a range of over 100 miles should be avoided. It is not possible for an antenna used in normal circumstances to receive a signal from a broadcast tower located much more than 70 miles away. We did a video on the 150 mile range antenna scam and there is a link to this video in the description. People buy these antennas with the expectations of receiving channels from a long distance away and end up disappointed when it doesn't happen. There are multiple indoor and outdoor antennas that claim the ability to receive channels more than 70 miles away, so look for those claims when shopping for an antenna. And be skeptical. When it comes to outdoor antennas, avoid antennas that have an abundance of plastic as part of their construction. Plastic adds nothing to improve reception and is more likely to break under stress. A good windstorm can wreak havoc with an antenna, especially one made with plastic. You also don't want to get an antenna with a lot of solid pieces, you know, big solid pieces, for the same reason. The wind will blow those around a lot. An outdoor antenna should be made of metal with space between the elements so the wind can blow through it easily. There are also antennas that provide directional rotors so you can turn your antenna towards the towers by using a remote control. Two problems with this idea. If the housing is plastic, it is much more susceptible to weather problems and quicker to fail because of it. Second, in order for the rotor to work, it will require power and that means running an electrical wire to the antenna. Any outdoor antenna should be grounded for safety's sake. If the antenna happens to get hit by lightning, grounding it should prevent the electrical surge from going into your TV through the cable connection. Installing them can be a bit of a challenge since you have to mount a pole on the roof, then run a coax cable and sometimes a power cable to the antenna. Since these types of antennas can be directional, it also has to be aimed in the right direction for the best efficiency. If there is room, think about installing one of these in the attic instead of on the roof. It'll make the installation easier. Indoor antennas that offer amplifiers are also a waste of money. Amplifiers are meant to boost a signal between the antenna and the TV on a long cable run over 100 feet. Indoor antennas rarely have a cable length of more than 20 feet so adding amplification on such a short run will usually reduce reception since the amplifier signal will override the TV signal. If an amplifier comes with the antenna, try scanning for channels first without the amplifier connected. If all of the available channels come in, then there's no need for the amplifier. Same as with outdoor antennas, don't fall for claims that that particular indoor antenna can receive channels from broadcasters located more than 70 miles away. Not possible, especially with the smaller footprint of an indoor antenna. Size matters, so stay away from the smaller units. They will have trouble bringing in channels, especially if you are more than 20 miles from the towers without any tall hills or buildings between you and the towers. The majority of available flat antennas are about the size of a sheet of paper, 10 inches by 10 inches. This size will work, but the ones with more element surface area will work better. Sometimes it is difficult to determine how much surface area there is for some of these antennas since you can't see inside. This one shows the elements and you can see that there isn't a lot of area for receiving signals. More is better. This is the one we made using a pizza box cover and you can see there is a lot of surface area to receive signals. It works great. One thing that helps is to use a longer length of coax cable than you need. The cable itself helps with reception. Don't go too much over 20 feet and try to keep it stretched out rather than coiled up. Indoor antennas don't have as many installation drawbacks as outdoor models do. It is worth the time to try out an indoor antenna before settling on an outdoor unit. All you need to do 
is connected to the TV with some coax cable. Then set the antenna on a table and scan for channels. If you did your homework and know how many channels to expect, you will quickly learn if an indoor antenna will solve your over-the-air needs. If you don't get as many channels as expected, reposition the antenna and scan again. Try setting the antenna a little higher on the wall or lay it on the floor. If none of these positions brings in any channels, you may want to consider an outdoor antenna. Hope this helps. Please subscribe. We think our subscribers are the coolest people on the planet.